Hey, welcome back live. We have a very special guest in the studio, somebody that the world is trying to talk to right now, Miss Sophia Eggleston. She is a Detroiter. She has filed a $300 million lawsuit against the hit show Empire because she says that the main character, the one played by Taraji P. Henson, is her. In fact, she wrote a memoir called The Hidden Hand. She gave it to a, a writer, and then the next thing you know, she sees herself on television. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being here, and good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here and to speak to my great city, Detroit. Tell us how this all came about. You said that you had written a memoir called Hidden Hand. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you look at Empire, and you see yourself on there. How do you believe they took your character and your personality and all of a sudden put it on Empire? Because in 2011, I was introduced to Rita Grant Miller by Rick Applin, uh, the producer of Lexi and several other um, films. Um, I believe she wrote Lexi for him. Mm -hmm. um, and he took me to her home, introduced me to her, and me and her after that, we began to talk. And then it was his auntie, Miss Montgomery, had several investors. Um, he had investors, but everybody wanted to script. Yes. Um, I refused to uh, sell out and sell my name. I told everybody that I wanted 51% of all proceeds. I turned all money down and walked out of California. I said, I'm not, this is God's story. Nobody's going to just take it and own it. They're not robbing me. So at what point did you realize that your character had been stolen and turned into a hit TV show? Well, when I, I kept praying, you know, and Lord, some things were going on in my life, and I, I could hear the Spirit telling me, it's right in front of you, it's right in front of you. So I really wasn't looking for it, but I, I got kind of interested in the story because even my patients, one day I went by one of my patients' house, and he was like, I need you to see this girl, yellow girl, because he called me yellow girl. <laughs> And um, so I saw it, saw it for the first time, but somehow my TV recorded the show. So every show that would come on, I would make it home. I would stop working and get home, and then I would watch it when I got home every night from taking care of the seniors up until the next night. And I kept, Lord, I need this, this going on, that's going on. He kept saying it's in the fish mouth, it's right here. So I know it was real simple. Then as I began to um, see it, it was obvious. You know, her whole character, um, the gay brother, they even gave the, one of the brothers a mental illness, the two cousins getting killed, mm -hmm. uh, the producer, all throughout my book. My oldest baby father was a producer, B.B. King, Johnny Taylor, Tyrone Davis, Dramatics, O.J., mm -hmm. George Clinton, all of them are in the book. My baby father, that's his voice on the dog, that deep voice. Mm -hmm. Then when Lucius got that illness, where well, Eddie, I was in prison when Eddie came up and told me he had cancer. And wow. then the lenient that he needed cookie, you know, Eddie used to pay my sisters and my cousins to find me, just to give me his money. He, he had a, he needed me, the need that, and then I said, oh, they gave her three sons. I got three daughters. You know, and the fact that she could go to the ghetto, I can go from the ghetto to the White House. The men in the federal and state prisons laugh all the time and say, I'm the only person in the city could go down to John Iron Erskine with a meat coat on at 50000 dollars with a jury. They won't rob me. <laughs> so you look at television, you say, this is me. How do you feel about that? And when do you decide that you need to be paid for that? Well, then I thought about that the last time I was at her house. She sat me down and had me look at the butler. And she told me that those were the people that she think would do best with my book. So then when I did some more research after seeing all of this, I realized that Empire did the butler. And she showed me that movie and told me that. So I knew they had stolen it then. Right. $300 million you're seeking in a lawsuit. Why $300 million? Uh, I really deserve much more. I was going to say, either why so low or why so high? Well, um, a good friend of mine out in California that uh, is a good friend, another friend of mine, um, that's what he came up with. And he really say that's 300 million times 17 because I have 17 defendants, so it's really more than 300 million. It's okay. 300 million times 17. Okay. How is the case going? I understand that you either don't have a lawyer or don't plan to have a lawyer. What's the next step for you? I've been interviewing attorneys. 
um, Figer had referred me over to being um, Amber, which is the best litigation attorney in America in 2015. You know, I gave him chapters. He told me I had a very good story. But Figer gets part of his referral fee, so his law firm didn't want to take it. You know, because he referred me and it was in a letter. So and he told me he was going to get back with them and see if they would come in and fight them would put up the money. But I'm still interviewing. I'm, le I'm right. being led by the Lord. I know this is God's fight, not my fight. Have the people, Lee Daniels or any of the producers of Empire, gotten in touch with you, tried to make a deal with you, corresponded with you at all? No, we just like Rita. When she went out there and made, she called me and told me that she was on her way to New Jersey. Uh, to see Lee Daniels, she was going to be there for two days. She had packed her bags lightly in 2012, and she was going to spend a day with her daughter that was in college and a day with him, and she was coming on to my house to spend four days with me. I never heard from her after that. Wow. A couple of months later, when I remember it so good, when Whitney Houston died, it was all over the news because she stayed right there around the corner from that hotel, and I would go stay there the second night to spend time with my friend Rick, the producer of Lexi, who introduced me to her. Mm -hmm. um, so I called her and I kept saying, Rita, it's been almost two months. You were, last time I talked to you, you were on your way to my home. Are you all right? Finally, she picked up the phone and said, Oh, Sophia, I'm so sorry. But when I landed in New Jersey, I had a phone, a message from my doctor saying I had fourth stage cancer, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So just like she's, she couldn't face me when she yeah. crossed me, they can't, they can't So you believe she betrayed you and your story ends up being the most popular show in America, and you got cut out of the deal. Right. In addition to being fascinated by your lawsuit and your connection to Empire, a lot of people are fascinated with your life now. I've heard you make some references to God and to the Lord. What has your transition as a human being been like? Because that's really the story. Yes. That has been the mystery that has been the most marvelous thing in my life. I tell everybody that in 1992 in the Wayne County Jail when I met the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that changed my life. That was the most beautiful place in my life because I found someone who could carry me through and help me even though I wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And my life began to change after I gave my life to him in that cell. And I am uh, thankful and happy for you that you've been able to find the Lord and to make that transition in your life. What is your life like now? Everybody wants to talk to you. You're all over the newspapers. Everybody is fascinated by this woman from Detroit who is suing the producers of Empire, saying that she is the character being per per portrayed by Taraji P. Henson. Uh, what are things like for you right now? Well, my life has always been like a mad rush. I mean, from 15 to 29, I lived so fast when I got locked up for murder. I was like, boy, 14 years went by. Um, I think God has prepared me for this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been many days, um, even with me being in the home care business, taking care of seniors, I'd be so tired, the only thing I can do is just go home and go to sleep and get up to go to work the next day anyway, and it feels like that. And he has right. pre prepared me. Yesterday was um, extremely, it was on another level, but it's still the same. Um, don't give up. Right. Who else trying to talk to you now? I'm so glad we get a chance to talk to you first, but everybody in the media wants to talk to you now, don't yes. they? Yes, yes. Right. Yes. From all, I've been getting calls from all over the country. I tried to do as many interviews as possible. Um, Your life has changed again. 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 One of these days, the <coughs> truth is going to come out. Mm -hmm. And when the truth comes out, what do you hope happens to Miss Sophia Eggleston and your life? What do you want ultimately out of this? Ultimately, um, because I stay extremely busy and I know that I have to stay extremely busy, first to even afford my lifestyle. <laughs> but I know there's a yearning in my soul where I can just take a week or two and days that I could just really spend time with the Lord alone. Mm -hmm. And my life has not given me that. Yes. But, well, and hopefully your life will give you $300 million as well. Then I can rest a little bit because I have to go to work to make money. Right. To pay my bills. Fantastic. You know? And I know that um, 
the Lord is going to do that for me. Also, I want to make a difference here in this city. Um, mm -hmm. I thank God for the heart that he put in my body. Um, I get very angry with our system about how our seniors are neglected and abused. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to do some good in your town of Detroit. That's all I've been doing. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. You know, to hear one day I heard a Oakland County prosecutor stand up and tell the judge, um, Mrs. Eggleston has worked very hard to get where she at. Someone had did some things to me. Right. And, you know, they used God to get next to her to try to destroy her. And they sent them back to prison for that, for doing that. You know what? We have run out of time. I want to thank you so much for being here. I wish you the best, and I hope we get a chance to talk to you again. Thank you. All right. Sophia Eggleston, she says she is the real female main character in Empire. Hey, folks, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. We've run out of time. Thank you, Elena Frugé, and have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday afternoon. This is AM 1200 99.9 .9 FM WCHB.